So we just finished our 12th day and I was going to take this opportunity to talk about some of the equipment that we've been carrying and using, equipment and clothing in fact. Um, I know a lot of people you know, think a lot about the equipment they're going to take and so I know we did, so I thought it would be a good, good chance to talk about that. So, kind of, kind of in the order that it's packed and used I suppose, uh, walking poles have been really, really useful and neither myself or Heather usually use them um, but they have been great, especially with the heavy pack and uh, wearing running shoes instead of walking boots to give us a kind of a bit more stability. Uh, so they've been good, definitely recommend those. Talking about footwear, we have worn running shoes. What's been fantastic about them is brilliant grip. Um, we're used to wearing running shoes rather than walking boots, so that makes sense from our point of view. Um, and we've worn them with Gore-Tex socks, and by and large, we've kept our feet dry. We had heard horror stories of um, people having wet feet for 15, 20 days on the trail ending up with trench foot. So we've had good feet, no blisters, so we're, we're happy with our footwear choice. Um, so what's in the bag? <laughs> Very briefly. Um, on the outside, we've kept our waterproofs. Um, I've got my jacket on at the moment, um, but waterproof trousers. That's worked really well for us. They've been instantly accessible and we're using relatively small packs. These are 40 litre Mammut climbing sacks actually, so not your typical backpacking sack. So we've needed to put a few things on the outside. Um, the other thing on the outside is my share of the tent. Uh, I'll leave that on there, but uh, Heather and I are sharing a tent and we've used that for a few nights. We've got a lightweight G2 iron, I think it is. It's been, it's been brilliant anyway, it's a really good tent. Uh, just one more thing about the waterproofs, these are Pertex Shield which I've never worn before and we've been dry, I've been dry, I'm very happy with those. Uh, so in the lid of my rucksack has been food, most of this has been eaten, but this is snacks for the day, rubbish now, some raw beans left over. Uh, compass which has been useful sometimes but not used that often and then also some basic hygiene stuff, hand sanitizer bit of loo roll and a lighter if needing to go during the day. Um, we kind of figured we're, we're 15 days away and doing lots of our own cooking it was really important to keep our hands clean and think about hygiene and neither of us have been ill so I guess it's worked to some extent. Other side of the rucksack a small trowel for digging uh, toilet holes if needed. So inside my rucksack, uh, oh first things first, waterproof Gore-Tex mittens. They've been brilliant, um, especially on this kind of August, September days when it's not actually cold, but it's pouring with rain. And you want to keep your hands dry, you don't want to have wet hands all day, so they've worked well. Um, those have been combined with some uh, soft, uh, sorry, power stretch kind of fleecy gloves, which have been perfect. So in my rucksack, um, as it comes out, uh, foot bags. So when we finish the day, we can put on dry socks, put your feet in those, and put your wet shoes back on and your feet stay dry. Brilliant. This is my spare clothes that I might need during the day. Um, what I've got on here, lightweight fleece, <laughs> uh, windproof uh, top which I've not actually worn but <laughs> it's not been so bad, cap, sun cap, that idea for that was really heavy rain and or midges and or sun. The midges, I've put the midge net over it. Um, haven't worn that either, have you? Haven't worn that, no. Midge net, essential. Haven't worn it much, but absolutely essential. Um, and then that's my hat, that's some um, uh, a, a buff. And that's all in a waterproof bag, and it's easily accessible. Uh, it hasn't been used, but it could have been brilliant. That is a two-person super light boffy. Um, we brought that with the thought that in an emergency it could be good, but also if we had torrentially wet weather, we wanted to sit somewhere to look at the map to make a decision to eat some food it would be really useful. In the event when we did have really heavy rain we were able to find some shelter in an old barn or under a tree um, so it wasn't needed. But Or we just be. stopped in between showers didn't we? Yes. Uh, smidge insect repellent. Um, Heather reckons it works really well. I think it's a attractant for me <laughs> but it's, uh, it's been good. Um, I've actually been putting it on my legs for about the last five days, kind of ankle to hip, covering them and then wearing the trousers. And since doing that, I've had no ticks. 
and um, before that I was getting two or three ticks a day so despite the long trousers and why so, didn't we choose DEET? we didn't want DEET because it's a pretty offensive chemical and this is a bit more environmentally friendly it's, yeah. been, it's been good um, so then inside my rucksack inside a, a waterproof liner so that is hill food for the day. I'm not going to talk about that because Heather's going to talk about food in more detail. Um, so some spare bags, used food bags, uh, <laughs> asthma drugs. <laughs> so these are some of the luxuries. In there is our first half of our map, an iPad and a notebook. The iPad's been essential for catching up on emails. Little towel, not really been used, could have got away without it. Uh, those are my spare socks, brilliant. So, wash things, toothbrush, toothpaste, uh, razor, been useful. Head torch, little head torch, what's worked well is we've got the um, uh, core kind of battery charger things where you plug a USB charger in or into the mains and we've been able to top up the head torches at each of our kind of overnight stops where I've stayed in a hotel or a b, b and then we've taken spare batteries should we have to use them a lot. Uh, a lid for the kettle, <laughs> titanium spoon, spare bag not being used. Uh, so that is the charger for the uh, head torch plus iPhone and iPad charger. So all the videos being done on the iPhone and the iPad for emails and stuff. Very technical, Shane. <laughs> uh, so in here, a few random miscellaneous stuff. I won't go into the details. Spare shoelaces. I will go into the details. I won't open it. Spare shoelaces. More asthma drugs. Uh, lube called Body Glide. Fantastic if you get any chaffing. And then a whole bunch of different drugs for medical issues not used. So that is a complete set of spare clothes. That's been useful if we well, would be useful if we got wet and also very useful when we stayed in B&Bs and hostels, etc. So those are some skins, leggings, a lightweight thermal top, uh, spare underwear, socks, um, pretty useful. Uh, so a very basic medical kit, some bandages, plasters, etc, etc. That is our spare gas bottle, should it be needed. And that is our last gas bottle. That, those have been lasting us four days, and that's basically boiling water for dinner and breakfast. What size is that, Shane? Oh, sorry. That is a 230 gram gas bottle, and that does two people, breakfast and dinner, four days, roughly. Um, so, uh, my chair's breaking. Uh, washing up stuff, a scourer and some washing up liquid. So this is our pot of miscellaneous stuff. Our main cooking pots are titanium, titanium pots, uh, pen knife. So these are biscuits to eat on the hill during the day and they're in here so they don't get crushed. Some sun-dried tomato paste, um, some olive oil and some sugar and food. What's also in here, titanium kettle, titanium mug. Combination of all that's been brilliant. Haha, -ha, a birthday present. So that is my Neo Air Thermarest pillow. Brilliant. Completely recommend that for a comfortable night's sleep. Um, a spare smidge. We've took too much of that, but I think we've been very lucky with the midges this time. Uh, we've got a little uh, stove each to go with the gas bottles. And we took two... Pocket to, rocket, isn't it? Uh, yours is a pocket rocket. And that's uh, the MSR one. This is just a generic small gas burner stove. Um, uh, and then we took too much... Sorry, we took two stoves. So we had one each. Should we have a problem with one of the stoves? They're so light. Um, lots of electrolyte. We've not had as much of that as we thought we would have. Um, simply because normally when we're running and we go through gallons of it, we're filling up a water bottle. But we've actually been drinking with a cup which is on Heather's rucksack straight from the streams. So it's really just been used as a drink in the mornings and evenings. So a bit too much of that. And we probably would have had more if it had been hotter. Yeah, it's not, it's not been too hot. So again, the details of that Heather will go into, but that is my share of two persons food for four days. So that's the heaviest single thing in my rucksack. 
more electrolyte unopened. And then the last few things <laughs> packed in nicely. So in there, I won't open it, there is a RAB Quantum Top sleeping bag. It's absolutely superb, 400 grams, uh, just down on the top half. It's my kind of racing mountain marathon sleeping bag and it's been brilliant for this. Um, just to give me a bit more flexibility and added warmth, I've got a silk liner as well. And then I've also got a lightweight Berghaus down jacket, which has been really good. So the combination of all those things have kept me really warm each night. We did deliberate over sleeping bags, didn't we? Yeah, we talked a lot about whether to take our kind of warm mountain sleeping bags or the lighter racing bags. And we decided actually with the silk liner plus a warm insulated jacket each, that should be sufficient for this time of year. And that was the right decision to make. So that's been good. Uh, a final miscellaneous bit here, um, that's the pan handle for Heather's pan. And then the last bit of kit that I would really recommend, that is, I won't get it out fully, but that's one of the Thermarest Neo Airs, and it's the full length kind of air bed mattress. It's lightweight, but it's very comfortable, and we've slept well, we've got one each, they're absolutely superb. And then finally, everything in a waterproof liner. You'll see that a lot of this is already in waterproof bags and everything is within a waterproof liner as well. It's just not worth getting your stuff wet. Um, and that is basically it, other than the clothes that I'm wearing. <laughs> well, it looks quite a lot when you see it in one big pile, but it's fairly minimal really, isn't it? Yeah, and we've pretty, we've pretty much got the same kit each, um, different, slightly different products, slightly different brands, but we've effectively sh shared the same amount of stuff. And how so much did it weigh? So my bag, when we weighed it about halfway through on someone's scales, was 13.7 kilograms, and that was with a full load of four days' food. Brilliant.